And everyone, thanks for joining. We're going to wait about a minute or so until we get started. Need some hold music. That would be a good addition to this. If these guitars back here were were real, I would grab one. I'd yeah. grab one and start playing, but I I I don't do that. That's that costs extra, and that'll get us over the contract requirement that we negotiate for today. Okay. Wait about a little bit more, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, everyone, thanks for joining. I'm Georgie. I'm a customer success manager at Open Space, and I've been here for about three years. And I work primarily with general contractors in the Southeast. Um, but the real star of the day today is Jack Quate Blank, construction technology manager at Coakley and Williams Construction. Jack, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Georgie. It's a pleasure as always to talk to you and uh, be on camera, which is two of my favorite things, talking and being on camera. So thanks for having me. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Thanks for being here. So Jack, to, to share a little bit more about the role and his role in the work that he does at Coakley and Williams Construction, um, he, as construction technology manager, provides strategic oversight, implementation, management, and training of all construction-related technologies. So a couple of the construction-related technologies that he oversees are open space and Procore. Um, so we're going to discuss our integration with Procore a little bit today, but he's also responsible for um, just the leadership and development of all entry level staff. Um, so Jack would love to hear a little bit more about a history, a brief history of Coakley and Williams construction, um, and then we'll, we'll get started. Great. It's a hard hitting question to start the day as a Coakley and Williams <laughs> construction is, uh, or general contractors in the DMV. That's what we in the DMV called DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, diverse vertical markets ranging from multifamily educational uh, hospitality interiors and government military work. I've been, uh, let's see, we're out of Bethesda, Maryland. And uh, yeah, so we do a lot of that, that work. And, uh, you know, we've been longtime partners with Procore and uh, we've been with Open Space for now a couple of years. And uh, it's been great success and everyone's greatly enjoying it. So appreciate you and all you guys do. Yeah, of course. You're fun GC to work with. Um, your role is really interesting. Could you tell us a little bit about? how you got into the construction industry. And, and then I'll ask you a little bit more about your role too, but how did you get into the construction industry? Sure. Uh, so I, going back 20 years, uh, at University of Maryland, a civil engineering major and uh, Maryland civil you either do state highway or construction. And uh, just so happened uh, state highway didn't have any inter internships for me. So uh, the uh, uh, GC out of Rockville was a, uh, building a, a health center on campus. And so I got a, a job there and I, it, was, it was a nice commute to uh, to work. And then I kept working there for a number of years and I've stayed in construction ever since. I've done a lot of different jobs in construction, uh, obviously ranging from intern to uh, project manager, quality control manager, uh, worked in pre-con. Uh, so a lot of diverse jobs. I've driven a Bobcat mini excavator, installed door hardware and uh, uh, cocked things, you know, all the different stuff that um, finds really helpful in in the role of construction technology manager. Um, in that, uh, as I'm helping people understand the technology, I have um, experience in the underlying analog construction. So it's really easy to show this is what we used to do back in in 2000, and now here's what we're doing now. And so it's not like a uh, bald tech nerd with glasses is telling them what to do. Um, I'm bald construction nerd telling them what to do with glasses on. So it's a, it's a, it's a nice, easy, easy connection there. Well, what made you want to switch to specifically overseeing construction technology? Um, sure. I mean, sure. Obviously. Yeah. The, uh, I just always thought it was really cool. Now it, it, it's, um, every stop I, I've always been part of a like tech committee or, um, something related to, you know, the pro core admin or some round table that did something. And, and I always thought that was a an enjoyable um, topic. And it just so happened that uh, an opportunity came up at Coakley and Williams Construction where I could kind of do that full time while also um, 
focusing on operational efficiency and best practices and you know co cohesive workflows is always frustrating. I feel like every company spends a lot of effort and energy creating new standard operating procedures and workshopping and like a bunch of committees that end up and, and these committees feel like they just exist to be committees. And so um, I, I'm happy that I could kind of put a stop to that and just give people a, a coherent roadmap that gets their jobs done um, faster and easier. And then they can, you know, use their, their big brains to solve problems instead of, you know, working out what is the correct workflow for submittal submissions. I, I think through working with you, one thing I've learned and picked up on is just you simplify the process for everyone because technology is supposed to do that, but you you make it really streamlined internally. And we'll, we'll get into that a little bit more today, but I want to start with the story arc of how you started, how Coakley and Williams Construction started using open space because it's quite funny. It's it's based on a misunderstanding. Could you, could you share a little bit more about the first project you used open space on and just the fiasco behind it? Oh. And fiasco is kind of harsh. It's well, not it was, fiasco. It's, it, it was... it's, it's more of a study <laughs> on on you know uh, watch how you're bragging because uh, you may have to to pay up. Um, yeah. So we uh, in the olden days, what like two years ago, um, Open Space had these like kind of pay as you go project model where you have a project, you get a quote, and you buy the project, and everyone loved it. You know, obviously easy to use and and uh, uh, really powerful and valuable. And uh, in a discussion with a client uh, job we were doing, uh, somebody brought up, oh yeah, we're, you know, we want to have this job document with open space. And the project team was like, instead of like, oh yeah, we, we, we do open space, we got open space. Well, their understanding of we have open spaces, it's on a project. The owner interpreted that as we have an enterprise um, service where they can now cancel the open space subscription that the owner side had, and they're just going to use ours, which we didn't have. So then we had to uh, quickly get that put together, which didn't take much time because the open space folks are so uh, easy to work with. Um, but that at that point, uh, open space had changed to an enterprise model, which I personally much prefer. And um, so then that just kind of said, hey, all right, we're going to buy it for this project. For, everyone's going to have it. And then we mm -hmm. just kind of owned it and, and went forward with, with having uh, open space on, on our most of our projects. I have a camera showing up at a job site in about an hour uh, for the you know, a, a, a interiors portion of a job that already has one, but they're so busy, you know, they, they do so much that they need to have two cameras to make sure that they um, have, have all their folks working. So it's quite wild. Um, but yeah, it just, it's kind of something that, that came up where the, the team was kind of excited about it and didn't, didn't quite express it in the right way. It's funny how things like that happen. And lucky for us, the owner mentioned open space and then you started using it and you know, I remember meeting with one of your PMs on that project, building a school, and they initially just wanted to document all of the trades before they were covered up. But now open space is a ubiquitous product across Coakley and Williams construction. What would you say, you know, given your role, you oversee how everyone uses open space and you ensure that it's, you know, being used in the proper way. Um, if you could give, you know, about five key takeaways or benefits that you receive from open space, and then we'll dissect each one. Oh my gosh multi I can remember yeah. all that. I'm in construction after all. Um, I think, I think the biggest for me that I think the big, most valuable thing, at least for me personally, which I, I like to, to worry about what I care about the most is mm -hmm. that uh, the capacity to just drop yourself into a project at any given moment and, and have a good understanding of how things are going. Um, one of the, the struggles of tip of, of standard construction photography which mm -hmm. I, I, rem I remember a time when I had a floppy disk in a Sony Mavica and I could take 12 photos on it. Um, oh but God. one of the struggles is you have to like know exactly what you're looking at and have it framed right and have context. And what open space does fantastically is uh, the whole thing is context, right? It's where is it? And then you can decide what, is, what you're looking at. So, um, you know, I can, I can fly into a project and drop myself in there and, and look all around and it doesn't matter who walked it, what they care about because right. you know, normal photos are, this is the one thing I want to look at in this moment. And hopefully they put in a, a photo tag in Procore. So there's that. Uh, I think that's of high value. I think from a learning and, and coaching and mentoring standpoint, and we at Coakley Williams Construction, we care a lot about mentoring and coaching. And one of the things that's really helpful, let's say you have a more seasoned superintendent and some younger staff, they can get together and review some of the captures as a group. And then 
you know, the, the, the team can share um, perspectives on what they're looking at and what they're looking for without mm -hmm. the, the, the typical risk of, Hey, while I see you here, let me ask you about this drywall penetration or this ceiling issue or this, or, Hey, this RFI that and everyone gets se separated. So that job site walk is, is now ruined. Um, you know, again, a, another contextual thing I think is really useful. That's, that's super helpful. Again, is the, the field notes where again, you have the opportunity to create an observation that, that has that grounding in the floor plan with the photo and a everything is together. Again, one of the biggest struggles as a former professional quality control manager is mm -hmm. you, 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 ha you have this perfectly written deficiency that's on a, and it's like the sub doesn't really know what they're doing with it. You know, you email it to them and then like, they think they fixed the problem and it's like, that was over there. And right. it's really, and, and that happens automatically versus again, me, me sitting there. I mean, I have vivid fond memories of a, of a, you know, half size set of drawings and notepad and like photos and like circling things like look over here and this is here and this is. Like right. you don't have to do that. So it saves a lot of time and energy. It's, you know, um, how many is that? Like three or four? I think, I think we'll just call that that That's good for good. your examples. No. I want to make sure we have time for the, the, yeah. uh, the gang in the chat to, to drop some chat questions too, if they'd like to as well. Definitely. And everyone that's, that's joined, you know, please feel free to type in questions that you have. I brought on Jack today just because, you know, he has been really successful with training open space and, you know, making sure that they've streamlined their usage of open space internally with all the other systems and processes, processes that they follow. Um, so a couple of things that, that Jack touched on, one was field notes. Um, so field notes is where you can take a photo with your mobile device or, you know, behind your computer and pin it to a specific location in open space in 360 degree view. So um, Jack is, you know, enterprise with Procore and he, his users, they also link those field notes directly to an observation or an, R, an RFI in Procore. Um, and so uh, thank you for mentioning that. I think you, you mentioned a couple of things, you know, internal collaboration, but also external, if you need to, um, you know, speak with your subcontractor on a specific location, having that PDF of the field note showing not only the, the image of the issue, but where on the floor plan it is, is simple, but really powerful. Um, and I do have a question. So I know that, you know, your integration with Procore, we have an integration with Procore. And so your enterprise with Procore, it's important that, you know, your teams are able to log into Procore and view all of your open space projects within Procore. What is the value of that for you? And how easy is, is it for you to set that up on all of your projects? Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, having something connected to Procore in the app marketplace is, is super important. Um, that's something on my, on my 700 page presentation on, uh, selecting proper, um, uh, tech tools that's on there being actually connected to Procore. Right. Um, again, it's, it having, not having to have an extra login, you know, you can log in with Procore is a huge win. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the mental hurdle to overcome having that second login is it's impossible to overcome. Right. And so having that login with Procore, having it in the drop down and the upper right hand corner in Procore, yep. like people just feel like it's part of the experience. Like they don't, it's, they're not going to a different website. If you have to type in the web, the web address, we already lost, you know, so having them where they're already doing work is, is so nice. Um, again, the, the connection in, in open space, you know, from my point of view, I take care of that for the team. It takes. 45 seconds, you know, I copy and paste the open space into Procore and then it um, does the things. Again, I'm a construction person. I don't know how tech stuff works. I just follow the instructions and then it's magic, which yep. I think is, is actually a really good indication of good tech is that I don't have to know how it works. It just does. And I think that's a nice thing is, is at first we had, when I, when I first got my first camera and set it up, I, I did, I think I watched three minutes of a YouTube video and then I walked the job and then did it. And then mm -hmm. I learned some lessons after doing it. And then I taught someone else. And then, um, and now we've got a couple super users who, who I volunteer to help people out. But the reality is, is like, I see, I see jobs, um, happening and, and they just do their stuff without, without really, uh, causing a lot of impact for me, which I personally really enjoy. I think that's a really good indication of a good product because it just, it just self self-supporting, which is really nice. And, and you brought up a good point too. If, you know, I think one thing you do well is if there was a team that you think needed a little extra help with starting to use open space, you've mentioned before that you'll, you'll lean on your champions, those users who mm -hmm. 
know how to use open space. They do a good job of capturing weekly and taking field notes. Um, yeah. And so is your workflow like with that? You just reach out to them and say, hey, can you, you know, go out to the site or you know, can you just share with these this team how you use open space and offer help if needed? Yeah, it's just it's a, it's a it's a open space is a lifestyle, right? You have to put it into your, your daily routine. It's like working out or eat or drinking coffee. Like you kind of have to just do it and you don't mm-hmm. necessarily like it once you get in the rhythm, it's not a special activity. You just it just happens. And I think once the project teams see that it can be part of your routine, that that is not a negative impact, and then there's positive output, they mm-hmm. realize that that their reluctance to do anything was maybe because they just haven't signed up for the gym yet and they haven't walked in the door and like the hardest thing is getting your foot in the door and then it's like oh yeah i, I i'm just gonna work out now like and it's like oh i'm because you see the same thing like uh again places back in back in the olden days when uh you know safety was less of a focus you know you had to bend over backwards to get people to do a job site safety inspection and turn in or safe a safety report well one right. of the I think the same thing now it's like, oh yeah, everyone just expects to do it. And I think the same thing with open space. If you just expect, Hey, it's in my outlook calendar that Thursday morning at nine 30, I'm going to go nine 30 to 10, 15. I'm going to walk the whole job. I'm going to, um, you know, press the button on my phone. That's in my pocket, start my walk five mm-hmm. minutes per clip. Cause that's the most efficient way to do it. Otherwise you'll mm-hmm. avoid problems. And then, um, you know, while I'm out there, I'm going to knock out a safety inspection too. You just make a nice, a nice day of getting down, done your stuff. Um, and construction is a whole, the whole construction world is, is really folk. It, your life is easier if you do some of these small things over and over and over again, and, and you avoid big problems. Uh, again, the jobs that struggle are the ones that, you know, don't do a, a weekly internal audit of their own finances. They don't do a weekly audit of their submittal and RFI logs or PCL. Yeah. You know, just review the stuff and your, your photo captures the same way. You know, if you're, if you're not taking full advantage of of that job site walk, then down the road you might have missed that uh, wall blocking that you need to capture, and now you, you just you haven't really gained the benefit. Yeah, I, I mean, I love that you've integrated open space internally within Coakley and Williams construction so well that you're not even training users on it. Everyone just mm-hmm. knows that you know we're, we're capturing twice a week, and this is how we're we're using this platform, and we sign in directly through Procore. Um, Tell me a little bit more about the remote benefits, you know, for project executives and owners and kind of how you pull up open space remotely, like during lunch. What is the feedback that you're hearing? <laughs> yeah. So um, when we were trying to to work out kind of how how we could encourage um, folks to use it before we even like really um, launched, you know, one of our VPs was like, hey, you know, we should just do it, have a team lunch and everyone sits around the computer and, and flies through the job. And they can enjoy, you know, learning from each other, identifying QC and safety observations, and you know, take away, um, take an opportunity where people maybe aren't uh, together, and you one encourage them to be together, and two encourage learning, and then three you set yourself up for success. Um, again, right. in in the olden days, you know, I was running two or three jobs, and there's a lot of, um, you know, again, I had to call the super and ask them, hey, what's going on with this, or or maybe a couple of days go by and it's like, oh, you know, you have to drive out to this job site and then go drive to this other job site that's in far away. I would, I would, I would name drop towns, but uh, people from all over the country, they wouldn't know where things are. Somewhere far away. Also in DC, like, it, it, you know, eight miles could be four hours. We don't know. But it, it's a great opportunity. You can, you can say, hey, let's see what the status is on the lobby of this hotel. Mm-hmm. You just drop yourself in. All right, so as of the state, we are right here, um, which is really nice versus spending hours in the car and then, and then not really getting what you need. You're so burnt by the time you get there, you miss right. out versus let's assemble some questions. Let's look around. Let's see where we are now. And now let's click over to the next job. And so yep. that really is, is valuable to, to saving time and energy from um, some folks who, who need to be using their executive oversight to follow up with vendors who are maybe behind, uh, follow right. up with team members who need support and uh, you know, making sure that everything's getting done and you get done. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we, we just did a webinar at Waypoint back in June and safety Susie, safety manager at uh, Humphrey Rich Construction. She said, I have eyeballs everywhere. You know, it's not possible for me to be at, on 15 job sites at the same time. So open space has completely streamlined that and saved a lot of time for, for her and, and others. Um, yeah. I love that. And, and I think it's funny too. tell us a little bit about your take your kid to work uh, you take your kids to work day. You've you've also incorporated 
a scavenger hunt uh, for? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me yeah, about so, that. Yeah. So right. So just to, to suggest how how uh, open space is so simple, children can use it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So the last two years at uh, the Take Your Kid to Work Day event at our company, um, I've included a uh, four dimensional scavenger hunt through space and time. Um, so select the project uh, over the course of a couple weeks. Uh, they will hide things, places. Um, mm -hmm. They'll let me know like what day, time, and room they're in. And then I put together almost like an escape room um, puzzle that that you know they decipher where things are, and then they go through the open space platform, find the item, let me know that, where it is, and I check them off. Um, so we've done that two years in a row, but it's really cool. Is it like last year? It's like more of a hey, this is how this works. Let's get this together. I didn't know what would happen, um, mm -hmm. but everyone had a great time. So we did it again, and you know, a year later, having these kids maybe used it for an hour, remembered how everything worked. We're showing other kids how things work. And it, like almost all the teams found everything in, in almost no time. So it was like completely uh, validated the product um, from a standpoint that, again, it's, it's kind of, you know, what you see is what you get. Uh, easy, easy flying around. I mean, it's Google Maps. And, yep. uh, and again, the, the, the kids had fun. What was nice too is we, they do, we do a, a bus tour of the jobs and so it's one of the jobs that they physically were in they get to go see then the capture later so it's like they can see the real life and the the, the capture so it's a nice combination of the two things and they can follow the progress of the site that they visited so that's really cool um helping those those children who might be construction professionals one day exactly that's the <laughs> idea um i know we have a couple questions one from michael um, Michael, if you wouldn't mind sharing your email, I'm happy to, oh, I see your email. So I'll reach out to you and I'll make sure that your customer success manager helps you upload, upload the capture that's missing. Um, so don't worry, we'll, we'll definitely reach out to you after this webinar. Um, and then, you know, I do want to ask Jack another question before we open it for questions. And, you know, just through my experience working with you, I'm really impressed with how you manage and prioritize, you know, your your work-life balance. It's important. I mean, you can see guitars in your background. You have a few podcasts, you have children, you also have a, a, a time-consuming job. So how do you, and how and why do you manage work-life balance and how do you help your staff manage their work-life balance? I think that's a big conversation in construction. Um, sure. Yeah. So in addition to being in a, in a um, back in the day, I was in a, a committee for uh, work-life balance, which didn't go anywhere. Um, what that told me is, is you, the individual has to own their own life like you you're you're your best advocate so it's really important that you look out for yourself and mm -hmm. no one else is going to so that that's kind of like a central controlling principle mm -hmm. um and then the next part of that is really just finding things where where you can I mean, be creative and create and not just consume things um and so again you don't have to be good at anything um but just okay. do your best and try stuff that's new and 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 does something that that sparks joy um, whether it's really bad art or bad music or whatever you enjoy doing poorly, just do it uh, regularly. So like, you know, 30 minutes at least. Um, not that not that our, our endless conversations about what shows we're watching are, are, are bad. <laughs> yeah. I, I appreciate those as well. But I think that's really important to have things that you care about. And it could be a sport, could be you know, an activity, anything that you do that's that's kind of outside of that. Um, and that's important. Obviously, family things, you know, again, prioritize that. that it's in your calendar. It's It's in, you know, you don't, you don't skip, I don't skip home stuff for work things. You just kind of make it work. And everyone kind of understands that. One thing I, I think I mentioned this to you at a different time was that um, I have this new thing that I think is everyone should try. Uh, all, all our friends in the, in the, uh, in the group here, just every week, look at your schedule of what meetings you have and pick one and cancel it. Just don't <laughs> do that meeting. And it's a really freeing opportunity to open up some time in your count, in your day to, to think and work. Um, one of the reasons, again, we talked about why I like tech and it's the opportunity to reclaim your time and mm -hmm. not waste um, energy and, and, you know, mental energy on things that you don't need to be. So right. it's automating things and making things so they're efficient. So later I can have more time to ponder and plan and get things done versus like grinding on a spreadsheet. One of the first things I did when I came to Coakley Williams was I looked at how people reviewed their budgets and I ripped it up and started from scratch because they're wasting days and now it's automated and it's like they they save like easily 40 
40 hours per team of budget review per month. Yep. And so like that's, that's time that you can reclaim that, that you can then hit some golf balls on a Friday that you can um, have a team happy hour that you can, you know, go to that, you know, go to a concert. Like there's so many more things. So I think working smarter, planning ahead and, and, you know, doing those like lifestyle type things, like your safety inspections, your open space walks, all that yep. combined together gives you all that opportunity to, to find time to, to reclaim your joy and, uh, and do things that are, that are enjoyable to you and to others. I really feel like you embody the work harder, not, I mean, work smarter, not harder motto. Yeah. Um, not low energy, high output. That's what it's yep. all about. Yep. And I know you ask your staff, you know, what do you like to do for fun? And you mm -hmm. keep them accountable and make sure that they're also not just, you know, working a bunch of overtime hours that they're managing that well too. Cause that's important. Um, all Absolutely. Right. Got, some, got some questions in here. Um, okay. So Michael, I'm going to be sending you an email and looping in your CSM because there are a couple other ways to upload your captures, but either way, we'll, we'll make sure that gets resolved. Um, another question is, let's mm -hmm. go in here. How do you validate the cost of open space, Jack? Yeah, that's a good one because the idea is that because you're using it, bad things don't happen, right? So like the, the to me, the, the, the example I like to throw out is, you know, what does it cost to cut open all the walls in your building because you think there might not be the right insulation in there, there might be, not be blocking in there or something's not uh, flashed correctly. So um, just ask those questions and it'll reveal itself. Yep, that's it. Like it's CYA tool. Exactly. You might not think you need it, but there are a lot of different ways that it'll it'll come in and save you and just validate the cost itself. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else. Camera recommendations. I know that you're using the Insta360 One X2. What are your thoughts on that one? Yeah, the X2 is is gets the job done. Uh, it's super on sale right now at uh, B and H Photo. Um, and that's that's where I, again not not they're not paying me yet to to promote them, but uh, yeah, I mean it out the door with the X2 camera, the an X, a memory card, they give you an extra battery, a lens protector. I got a carry case for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know, talk to your open space customer service people with uh, getting the yep. hard hat mounts. But even if you buy your own, like out the door, I'm under $500 and the job is uh, is good for, for however long they need it. Plus moving to the next job. Um, one nice thing about the open space dashboards, the, the reporting will show you which camera is doing what on what job. So it's an easy way of keeping track of your inventory. I also keep a side list, which again, I talked about working less hard, but that was, it takes like one second to update it. But it's, uh, it, again, you can move your cameras around. Uh, some other people I've talked to, again, they find because they're so affordable that essentially they're considering a disposable camera. So they get it on a job, they use it, and then the next one gets the next one. Uh, but yeah, X, X, X is fine. They came out the X3 which is probably also more fine. Mm -hmm. um, and again, there's the other ones, the uh, the Rico Theta is a little pricier. Um, I think the the more affordable cameras, from what I've seen, if the team member who's doing the walk is a little more brisk with their gait, um, mm -hmm. the image capture is a little less good um, in dark light. So... Yeah. Um, maybe this, the Rico with the slightly larger sensor or the X3, um, can process the lower light better. I, if I just ask someone to walk like 2.7 miles per hour instead of 2.9 miles per hour, I think it yep. also kind of covers the same thing. Another pro tip is to, if there's something of unique interest or a specific room that has great value, just take a pause and stand there for 15 seconds and just yep. let all that get absorbed more. And, and that's something that, um, will will come with um experience that that tends to do better some of the newer folk who get excited and then they like are running through the building cuz like that again I referenced 5 minutes as like a cutoff I think that's the most amount that you can squeeze into a capture and have it be a reasonable upload um but I would highly recommend um that as a as a kind of a central just take your time it's actually a lot of time that's a good plug i mean when i first started at open space and i took a test capture I walk fast. So my, my capture was really blurry. So just simple way as a best practice, just walk slowly. You don't need to walk painfully slow, but stopping and pausing like Jack recommended is also a really, really big recommendation we have just to make sure you're getting the highest capture quality. 
Um, we do have an open space storefront that's new. And so for anyone that's looking for new cameras or accessories, please reach out to your, your account executive or your customer success manager or the support team and they'll point you in the right direction. But one of our latest, our newest cameras that we provide is the Insta360 ONE RS. Those are great cameras. And I might even try to get Jack to purchase a few because they have really high quality, I mean, imagery, especially in low light conditions because they have that dual one inch sensor. So that's that's what I've been recommending. Um, but we'll go into a couple other questions too. Guys, please feel free to type in any questions that you have. Um, this is a good one. So what's the most difficult part of getting up and running with open space? We have some team members who are resistant to new tech. Have you experienced that? How do you handle it? Yeah, it's uh, the construction industry does tend to lag behind um, in some ways in technology. Um, but it's getting really a lot better, to be honest. Uh, I think it's going back to the example of like just getting into the gym. I think it's getting started. Um, we did have a project uh, we had a meeting on that was like, it kind of did a couple captures and then didn't really do it anymore. But then mm -hmm. that's when we reached out to Georgie and uh, and the team and said, hey, let's just have a, a round table where we can have people who are doing it really well and people who yeah. are maybe having more concerns about it and get them together and say, hey, let's just share experiences. And I think at some point they're like, you know what, this isn't this, maybe I was a little nervous about this or it wasn't necessarily my my cup of tea. But now that I see things a different way that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Woody is killing it out there on his job and I want to be like him. So I'm going to try to do better or at least or we have more resources. Like, hey, you know, it might be scary, like someone like me intimidating you into using your camera. But if your teammate Woody is like, Hey, let me come visit you. Like, it's nice having these extra people who, who make people feel like it's, it's, um, it's something that's easy to do. I did recently do a presentation at my, uh, Procore community, uh, meeting I hosted a couple weeks ago and the topic was, uh, tech adoption. And so part of it is the, the communication and, um, promotion of things that you're doing. So it's a lot of it, a lot of what I do is cheerleading and, um, hype man work. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, at, at our monthly project manager meeting or the field meeting, um, I'll throw out like, here's cool stats on this job in the open space or here's something, hey, we're rolling out open space. If you would like me to get this set up for you, like here's some of the benefits, you know, and you keep talking about talking about it so it becomes something that isn't, um, isn't something that's scary. It's something that, that they're jealous that other jobs have it. And that's where I think is like a really cool transition point where it's like people are, they go from like me, putting it on them versus them asking me for it, which just happened on uh, a job that I sent that has a duplicate. So we have a base building and then we have the interior fit out of a space in that building. Mm -hmm. And so a, a team member says, Hey, like this, like this is 65 year old superintendent. It's like, Hey, I need to get on this open space thing. I see, I see uh, my guy PJ doing it. Like I want to be doing it too. And so like they get jealous and it's, it's, it's actually really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, technology can be overwhelming when you're, expected to use it all of a sudden and change up what you've been doing previously. But I think just leaning on your champions and having them share the value that they're seeing is really powerful. Yeah. Um, Amir, I saw that you typed in the Q and A, but I'm not seeing a question. So feel free to type that, type out that question if you have one. Um, but we'll also go in and another question is, Jack, you mentioned that you started using open space for all of your projects after mm -hmm. an owner had required it. Do you share open space? Act, do you provide access to owners by adding them as a member or through a shared folder? Or, you know, how did you make that decision with sharing and, and what's their feedback? Yeah, I uh, we we share it on uh, as members of the open space projects. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we that's the best way of getting them access to it. Owners don't like it when you are sanitizing and hiding things from them, and we're, we're not trying to, right? We're, we're partners with our clients, we have a high rate of, of, uh, return clients. And part of that is, is, you know, we're partnership. We're all working together to build a great building safely and quickly and under budget. And so, um, you know, we invite them into the process, uh, you know, there's, uh, yeah, I don't like shared folders. I think that's a, a, a an awkward added work way to do it. Um, yeah. but yeah, again, having them on job, you know, we're not inviting them to take captures. Um, you know, maybe we're not, but, you know, we're sharing our observation log in Procore with them. You know, we're showing them, these are the deficiencies we found. These are the safety deficiencies we found. Right. And so 
when they feel like they're part of the process, you know, that level of trust goes way up. And then when that is there, like it's a much higher performing team and, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the project gets done in a much healthier way. Yeah. I love that. Um, and for, for those of you who might not be aware of the shared folders option, um, it can be nice for, you know, if you need to share just one capture or one location with an architect Mm -hmm. and just send the, the public link, um, instead of, you know, having them see everything, but I love that you share them, you know, give them access, full access so they can see everything and, you know, one team. Um, do you ever turn over that data to the owners after the project? We haven't. Um, no. Because they, they're interacting throughout the whole phase of the project, but you yeah, can't. It, it's, it's not, yeah, it's not, uh, you know, it's like, in the biz, we call this a, a segue, but um yeah. We ha- we do give them um, time lapse video of kind of the exterior construction of the project. It'd be really cool if we had time lapse of the open space in the project. Georgie, what's up with that? Yeah, it's great that you bring that up. We are actually our product team is currently building a time lapse feature within Open Space, so customers will be able to, you know, go to a certain location in your project and create a time lapse video, produce it themselves. So that'll be huge for all of our customers. I think just being able to highlight that, you know the progress and the work that you've done and, you know, share it on social channels and with the owners and just showcase, you know, everything that you've done. So I, I think that'll be really exciting. And so that's coming soon, Jack. Yay. Um, but I do want to mention also the offline deliverable is a great, great option for at the end of the project, when you're wrapping up, it's complete. Um, if you'd like to generate a zip file and share it with the owner that can live on their, on their, desktop for the rest of their life and they can access it on offline and, and just have access to certain areas whenever they need to 10 years down the road. So just know that that's an option for you if you'd like it. Um, and a lot of customers do do that at the end of the project, just request an offline deliverable. Um, so yeah, it's a great part of a too. turnover package. Yes. Yes. Um, all right. Well, I know we're almost at time, but some great questions here. If anyone else has other questions, um, please feel free to jump in. Happy to answer any questions that you have. And Jack, I'd be curious if you want to post your uh, Coakley and Williams construction podcast link. Might oh, be good. Sure. Yeah. Like I expect uh, everyone to subscribe to our YouTube channel. So I'm going to drop this in the chat so you guys can uh, see that. Let's see. Here we go. Boom. Cool. All right. Yeah. Like subscribe to that. And uh, you'll get all kinds of valuable quality content going forward. Um, so you won't miss anything on, on what's happening in the DMV and what we're building and cool. uh, an exciting new content. I'm sure we'll have some, some cool open space content in there too. We'll see. Awesome. I love it. Jack, thank you so much. Really appreciate you. Um, everyone will receive a, a recording, even those that weren't able to attend. So please feel free to listen and share it with others who might be interested in open space, but um, if there are any other questions about, you know, uploading captures, cameras, anything open space related, uh, please reach out to support at openspace.ai. Or if you know who your customer success manager is or your account executive, they're happy to help you too. But support will be a great starting point if you're not sure. And then um, I'll go ahead and email you, Michael, just to make sure that you get that capture uploaded and that get, that gets resolved. But um, yeah, thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Bye, y'all.